uh, and those trips were, you know, really eye-opening. I shot in Burma a few weeks ago, shot in Thailand, South Africa, uh, Lower Ninth Ward in, in New Orleans, and uh, Northern Ireland. And, and, uh, and uh, all of those trips were really informative. You know, when you get out there in the, these parts of the world, you can uh, see, you know, learn quite a bit. You've got one hell of a wanderlust, don't you? Yeah, I mean the world is interesting to me, and I, I have the means. I mean, I can get out there and go, and so I do it, and and that that's what informs my opinions, and you know what I do on stage, what I write, what I photograph, and, and I, I I read. I'm sure you you read. I mean, everyone is you know likes to read books, and I'm a fairly voracious reader. But well, that's the problem. Everybody actually doesn't, as you know. <laughs> well, it's true, but you know, uh, I, I think people who listen to your show or you, you know, you you, you want to know, so you, you sure. crack a book open and you read it. Yeah, a lot of Americans don't read, and they don't read enough, and hopefully that changes. But um, no, I get what point, you're saying. I, you're saying we read. Well, well the, the point is, I, I try and read a lot, and never have I had a book have the same impact on me. Like a book about a country is never as relevant as my trip to that country. And so basically, uh, knowledge without mileage is a bunch of bull to me. It doesn't oh, really I agree. Matter. You've got to actually go out and, and, and verify and, and then see if that perspective you saw in the book was accurate. And a lot of times you'll find the book was somewhat accurate, but it was their perspective, their lens. Well, well, well yeah. And, and so I, I kind of like the Indiana Jones version of things where you just kind of get in there and, you know, you walk through it and you see what happens. And, and I do that in Central Asia the Middle East, uh, Southeast Asia, on my own every year. So uh, how many countries do you visit a year on average? It depends. Uh, between 5 and 20-some. This year has been, uh, you know, uh, all of Europe, well, a lot of Europe, uh, Scandinavia, the United Kingdom, Australia, New Zealand, uh, and then the aforementioned countries. Uh, Where do you see our future going in this nation? I see it as an empire teetering on the brink of collapse, the dollar devalued, both parties incredibly decadent and delusional, the lies have never been more blatant. I see that as a desperation move. I mean, A, do you agree with that? And B, where do you see the future of this nation? Well, I, I agree with what you said, but I, I'm optimistic in that I think America is going to have to hit a very hard bottom line. I mean, we're going to have to fall on our collective butts very hard. And it's like a cocaine addict. It might take another million dollars worth of coke for this person to find out that coke is not the answer. And and so maybe uh, another million foreclosures. And finally, um, even uh, Cudlow and company will have to admit that all is not well in America. And and so maybe that's what it's going to take. Maybe it's going to take uh, more countries in the world just basically uh, starting embargoes on America. Just like, no. You scare us. We don't want to play with you anymore. Uh, maybe it'll it'll take the whole world just uh, uh, convening some kind of court and, and slapping us on the wrist and saying, wake up already. I don't know. But I do think that there's enough positive, progressive people in America who are into things like the reality of global warming and the, and the fact that we can pursue alternative fuel sources, that we don't have to drill ourselves out of every possible energy shortage. And, and I think that will eventually prevail because there will be no real way to sustain these fake wars. I mean, the, the war in Iraq, the invasion and occupation of Iraq, is quite unsustainable. There's just not the money or the manpower. Uh, I think you have a handful of crazy people uh, you know, th those who used to get laughed at in D.C., like, you know, the eight neoconservatives. And back years ago, people go like, look at those guys. Look at that guy Wolfowitz. What a trembling maniac that dude is. Well, all of those guys got in. And, and you know, they waited on the sidelines through a lot of the Bush administration, certainly through the Clinton administration. And they got their game together, like Project for New American Century and all that. They did not sleep. They planned very well. Trembling maniac. I'm stealing that. It's all yours. And, 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 soon, and soon as they had their moment, they jumped in, and here we are with no money. Uh, they, they have nothing but contempt. For, and our name's destroyed. Funds. Our name's destroyed, and Karl Rove tells the New York Times, I control reality, and, and, and we're history's actors, and you just watch us. I mean, they really are power mad. Yeah, and, and you know, the, when they say something is true, all of a sudden they just recreate the world to make it true. And after a while, you forget that you, you spent all day lying to make that thing true, and all of a sudden you're the man. And, and I, I think that's, that's the Kool-Aid these people sip. I mean, I, it's, 
it's an incredible amount of power. It's, they believe the like, lie is the truth. Final segment with Henry Rollins. We'll see if we can twist his arm maybe for five, ten minutes more. But final segment coming up with Henry Rollins. Stay with us. All right, final segment with Henry Rollins, but he's agreed to come back on in the future. Henry, what I'm trying to... My point is is that you're somebody who loves liberty and freedom, and I think you're a good guy. You're speaking out against censorship of the web, and I'd like you to briefly talk about that before you leave us. But then you talk about, you know, these hillbillies that want to attack a country but can't find it on a map, and they want a, you know, fully automatic rifle. My whole issue is is that that's kind of the controlled left paradigm. We should have an armed population, and we have a tyrannical government as a check and a balance against them. So where do you stand on gun control? Well, I think you should have a gun in your house if you want to defend your family. I don't think any family, you or me, uh, needs an assault weapon. If I was a policeman in your town, and I know I'm going up against people with bullets that can go through my door, in through my body and through the body of my partner, and I am not given ceramic-plated body armor, which stops an AK-47 round, I've got a real problem with that. And I don't think any citizen... What are you going to shoot with a gun? An intruder, yourself, on a bad day, or maybe a deer, right? You're not shooting al-Qaeda, so you don't need an AK-47. A shotgun, a handgun, fantastic. Uh, an assault weapon. But you see, once easily... you let them start restricting, they can restrict it all. And certainly, you know, throughout history, tyrants have sought to disarm their quarry. Yeah, and and I, I just don't think you'd ever be able to uh, disarm America. I just think it can be uh, delicately regulated to where um, even Charlton Heston's ghost will be satisfied. I just don't think Americans no. need assault weapons. I don't think you'd ever successfully stop abortion or you know take the rifle out of anyone's cold dead hand well i mean i see your point there but i mean here's another issue uh the sun has no spots on it it's cooling down uh the earth goes up and down in temperature i have no doubt we need cleaner fuels uh that the oil companies are corrupt uh but just to then say well, well we need a global tax to stop global warming uh you know, i've got a lot of issues with that no oh, that's interesting i mean I, I when i go on tour now i pay money to compensate for the global uh, for the carbon footprint my bus leaves and um, so when, when I take my tour bus out on the road, um, I'm, I'm doing damage. And so I compensate for that by, uh, you know, sending money to this, this outfit my road manager hooked me up with. And we're going to be... Uh, yeah, buying credits. Well, I mean, the, the central banks have said they want us to buy carbon credits from them. And it's just a global tax, Henry. I'm not saying... I know you want to do good and want to reduce the fuel you're using, and I'm all for that. I just think you're a smart guy. You might... You know what? We're going to go to break when it ends. Let me get an address or a P.O. box from you. I'm going to mail you a film I made called Endgame. Uh, and, and I know you're a smart guy. It has a whole bibliography at whatistheendgame.com. And right. I want you to fully look into the larger eugenics operation behind that. I mean, are you aware that there is a global elite that does want to carry out worldwide population reduction? Uh, no. I, well, you're a smart guy. I bet you've come across some of that Malthusian social Darwin stuff. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, Malthus said that we're all going to die of starvation. And, uh, you know, the Industrial Revolution momentarily proved him to be wrong. And now, as soon as you give more people more food, they breed more. Uh, you know, there, there's, there's a lot going on with food systems in the world yeah. and the unsustainability of soils and, and the dangerousness of artificially produced nitrogen and uh, the fact that we're breeding these animals so hard and so fast that, you know, they're mutating and uh, you're eating strange meat and, uh, you know, your, your E. coli is going zoonotic more than... Uh, oh, I agree. I mean, now they make cl clone beef is in the population. we got uh, two minutes left with you. Uh, what happened on the airplane? I mean, you're you're reading a book, and now reading a book is, is oh, evil? Oh, yeah. Uh, I was reading uh, Jihad by Ahmed Rashid, and uh, the man sitting next to me uh, called me in to Homeland Security, and I was deemed a person of interest for reading a New York Times bestseller put out by the uh, Yale University Press. So <laughs> um, it's an interesting time we're living in. Uh, I just bought that guy's new book, too, I, uh, Descent into Chaos, I think it's called. I've not yet read it. I just, just got it in the mail. I'm looking forward to it. He's a very sh astute writer. Give us a one-minute rant on how they're trying to shut down the free web. 
Well, I, I, I think they're, they're trying to regulate web speeds and accessibility. Uh, I think the, the short of it is, is that the man is afraid of you having access to information, lest you start questioning his actions or maybe learning history so you're doomed not to repeat it. And so uh, I think the, the net is wildly informative, and they don't want that. They want you to believe the bumper sticker, like Boycott France, or anything that comes from the mouth of Rover or, you know, any of these fox bastards. And and so it's just too much freedom for them to deal with. Well, I agree, and, and, and I've seen some of the rants you've done where you break down Internet 2 and how they're trying to regulate. I mean, what's the answer? Just expose it? Fight back against it? Well, you fight back as best you can as a citizen. But, you know, I, I, I wonder what can really be done when, they, when the hammer comes down on all of that. I mean, it's... Uh, it's, it's damn infuriating because, you know, the beauty of, the, of web neutrality is the rich, the poor, you know, the, the hippie, the, the gay, everyone has access to information. Jefferson would have loved this. Absolutely. Uh, HenryRollins.com on tour in the U.S. and worldwide. Check it out there for when he's coming to your corner of the woods. He goes everywhere unless it's Antarctic. Uh, Henry, let me say bye to you here in this uh, break. And that's it for Henry Rollins. We appreciate him joining us. Stay with us.